This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey there everyone, how's it all going? I'm totally hyped with the PC release announcement of God of War 2018. I so wanted to play since the first God of War game and finally I will get my hands on the series. Now you must be wondering why I didn't play it on console, well I'm a PC gamer and that's a separate topic, let's not digress into it. So I thought it's the best time to take you to the snowy north and create something along the lines. Since this edition of God of War revolves around the Norse mythology, I'll add elements inspired by the battle between Thor and Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent. Moreover, it will also be something new for me as I haven't done a snowy scene, so you might find it interesting. I'll try to create an expansive landscape and keep it as realistic as I can. I will also play a bit differently with the light and shadow in this composition. Do let me know in the comments if you find this video helpful and you get to see something new from it. Alright then, let's dive into it and let's create. I started with creating a rough sketch on the canvas. I used the rule of thirds to place the foreground land and keep the top two thirds for the rest of the landscape. I placed the traveler on the bottom right intersection point of the 3x3 grid and I'll put the other area of focus on the top left intersection point of the 3x3 grid. Going by the general rules of composition, if you put your points of interest in these focal points, the composition looks pleasing. I'll be creating ancient remnants of Thor's hammer Mjolnir and the skeleton remnant of the world serpent. Sketching before the actual photo manipulation helps ideate and experiment with the process and can be a real time saver if you want to explore different options like you can see here. I'm using an axe for reference but I'll replace it with a hammer in the actual composition. I also plan to add a dog or a wolf as a companion to our traveler and add something in the traveler's hand. It will be like an ancient runestone which he may be using as a guiding compass. The right wall and the trees will help frame our composition and the path from the first focus will help guide the viewer's eyes to the second focus, whereas the axe will hopefully guide the eyes back to the right wall and to the first focus. This sense of motion in the composition generally makes it look appealing. With the sketch more or less done, it's time to bring in the stock images. Now coming to stock images, you must be wondering where from I got those crazy angles for the axe or the dino skulls. The answer is Envato Elements, who is also the sponsor of this video. I am using Envato Elements for the last year and it has been an integral part of my photo manipulations and video production journey. Among the massive library of items, their excellent collection of 3D assets will let you rotate, download any image at the correct angle fitting your composition. This greatly helped me to try and test out multiple angles of the object before finalizing it. Moreover, you can download it as a PNG or a PSD but the main thing is they are already cut out. So you can imagine how much time it will save when I use images like this bear tree. And club the 3D assets with high quality stock photos, this is truly a treasure trove for photo manipulators and digital artists. But my friend, this is just the tip of the iceberg. With more than 50 million assets, Envato Elements is bound to satisfy all your creative needs. Be it video production, you get a whole array of stock video footage, video templates and royalty free music, or for your graphic designing needs, you have a plethora of graphic templates, fonts and add-ons. You can even access presentation and web templates if you want to take your business to the next level. And the most exciting part, you get unlimited download access and commercial licenses to everything with just a single subscription. And that too for less than $20 a month with the 50% discounted annual plan. So instead of paying $33 every month in the monthly plan, you just get to pay $16.50 per month in the annual plan. If you think Envato Elements is for you, you can get your subscription today and unlock unlimited creative assets. I will add the link for you in the description section. Alright then, let's get back to our composition. For the traveler, I started with this image of a somewhat modern viking, used the subject selection to quickly select him out and manually paint it to refine the edges. He did not fit the medieval time frame I was opting for, so I customized his attire. I will be making him hold a rune stone in his hand so I patched in appropriate images. I took the forearm from this image and the hand from this one. It had the perfect angle, I will simply replace the compass with a rune stone. His trousers were too snugly fit in my opinion, so I loosened them up using the smudge tool. I decided to go for a more medieval look for his forearm, so I used this image instead. I also added a far west wrap to add more variation to his winter wear. 
added some shadows here and there and some extra elements like this pouch and the rune stone. I thought it would be nice to give him a spear to anchor to the thick snow as he travels and an axe to protect him from any wild animals. I kept working inside the small object so that it stayed easier to manage. I used two images of the wolf to create our canine companion. Now it's time to place the photos for the landscape. I started with this image for the right wall and this one for the mid ground. Added some snow covered rocks to fill the very foreground. I also added some snow covered pine forest for some variety and life. I brought in this PNG of the dinosaur skull, dropped it into place. I also dropped some ribs at a various angles which I downloaded from Envato Elements. I decided to go with this hammer but mix it with a more ornate handle from this axe. The end stub of the handle was a bit off so I cut it out and fixed accordingly. I added some extra spikes on the skull and used the clone stamp tool to fill in the texture from the skull. Next it should be a good time to create the distant landscape. I used several images of snow covered mountains at sunset and roughly tried to patch them in. I tried to make a valley like depression where the skull and the hammer are. I used photoshop's sky selection tool to select and remove the sky and fine tune the selections manually. This image of the nice sunlit mountains goes very well with the scene and will also stand out when making the foreground objects darker. I am not color correcting at this moment as I am concentrating on the environment creation. I use the free transform warp wherever necessary to mold the mountains according to my liking. I am using mountain images with the sunlight on the right side to match the light direction I am going for. I dropped a dark sky image as I wanted to create a dark moody environment but lit up at strategic areas. I used the hue saturation layer as a clipping mask, checked the colorized checkbox, took some color in the blue shades, reduced the saturation and decreased the lightness to turn the sky dark. Then I masked it at areas to take away the sunlight from the left of the sky image. I moved around the same sky image and patched in areas with interesting cloud variations. For the furthest away mountains, I used hue saturation to darken it up and used selective color to change its dark orange highlights to a yellow orange color. I masked out the dark hue saturation layer to reveal the highlights on the mountains. Next I started applying color grading. I darkened up the individual objects by using curves adjustment layers as a clipping mask. I mostly dragged down the top right node in the RGB channel to darken and also went into the blue channel and lifted the top right node to introduce some cool blues as it will be an icy scene. If I felt I would make a certain area look lit by the sunlight, I masked the dark curves adjustment layer. The settings varied based on the original tonal values of the individual objects. I added the missing PNGs of the bare trees to frame our composition and guide the viewer's attention to the focus. The trees were already covered in snow so it's a nice touch. I decided to play with the lights a little differently than usual. I added some shafts of light hitting the ground that may be coming from the openings in the mountain peaks from the right. This would help make the mid ground look interesting and make the dark foreground elements realize better. I used a curves adjustment layer for this purpose, boosted the RGB curve from the top right node to brighten it up and also boosted the curve in the red channel and dropped the curve in the blue channel to add the yellow orange hue. Then I painted on the layer mask as necessary. Next it's time to cover the ancient remnants in snow. For that I took a part from this image as it has a nice texture to it. I added curves like shown to darken it up and also add a blue color cast. I played with the blend if a bit to reveal parts of the underlying image. Then it's all about painting on the layer mask at the correct areas. I also used the clone stamp tool to extend the texture at places required. As I say with all texturing, I broke up the continuous pattern and aligned the textures with the angle of the underlying object so that it looks realistic. I did the same texturing for the ribs, overlaid the snow texture as before and adjusted as required. Added the curves and darkened it up by dragging the top right node of the RGB channel and painted on the layer mask and used it to define the shadows inside and on the skull. Used a similar curves layer to define the shadows on the hammer and the ribs as well. I smudged up the bottom of the hammer and the skull to create some distant snow and make the objects look planted on the ground. 
Now things will start to look interesting as I add the light from the sunset. I added the curves as a clipping mask on the entire group and painted with white on a layer mask filled with black at the strategic areas. For the curves settings, I dragged the top right node of the RGB channel to brighten it up and boosted the curves in the red channel. At the same time, I dropped the curve in the blue channel to introduce some yellow and create a nice yellow-orange color cast. I'm trying to create a very low angle light source from the right and I painted them strategically so that the shapes of our interest becomes prominent and it also looks enigmatic at the same time. Obviously some footsteps in the snow were missing, so I added them for both the traveler and the wolf. I painted some snow as well to cover the areas where the feet touched the ground. Here I experimented with the overall look of the scene and tweaked some small things. I felt that the furthest mountain was blocking the view, so I brought up the free transform warp tool and dragged it down a bit. Played a bit with the size of the traveler and the wolf as well, and I felt that the bright sky was a bit distracting, so I replaced it with some darker clouds from the same image. At the same time, I removed parts of the wall on the right to free up some space. Now it's time to work on one of the most important areas in the composition, the atmospheric effects. This will dramatically change the scene and help add the desired look. I started by adding some haze on the distant mountains. I simply clipped a layer and softly painted some colors of the sky. But I did mask out some sunlit areas. Along with the haze, I also added some thick smoke to simulate a strong snowstorm. The atmospheric haze will help make the further objects look distant and the nearer ones look closer to the viewer. If you want to learn more about these concepts, I have a very detailed video on the topic. You can check it out from the description section. I think you will find it helpful. The smoky snow that I'm painting now will help add volume to the scene, create depth and separate the individual layers. The mountains at the distance are painted with a washed out color, whereas more details are retained on the nearby layers. At the same time, I added a little Gaussian blur of about 0.5 to 1 pixels on the distant mountains to remove some of the details. I will also add some tufts of snow blown away in the wind to add some dynamic effects. For that, I took this image of smoke coming out from a chimney and used the channel separation method to select the white smoke. I duplicated a copy and added a channel mixer adjustment layer, checked the monochrome checkbox and tweaked the sliders so that the sky looks close to black and the smoke is close to white. Merged the channel mixer layer and the duplicate copy and then selected the white pixels and added it as a mask on the original image. I fine tuned manually wherever needed. I will also add the smoke only at the sharp edges and peaks. The objective is to create a feeling that the strong gust of wind is blowing away the deposited snow and it looks like a smoke. I used free transform warp along with the smudge tool to mold it. For color corrections, I used curves to turn the darker tufts of snow in some dark blue tone and in the areas where it gets hit by sunlight, I brightened it up to a bright yellow orange color. I'll display the average curve settings that I used, you can pause the video and check if you want. I also used a separate image of clouds to add a variety of this smoky snow. Although I'm not sure how realistic this effect is, but I think it looks pretty cool. It is just a matter of trial and error and experiments to find out what looks good. I use the same approach to add some loose snow blowing in the wind in the ground area. Once I was somewhat satisfied with the smoky snow placements, I added some ambient light on the foreground characters. They looked too dark, so I added a curves and painted on the mask in selected areas to make the shapes more defined. The ambient light should reflect the color of the sky and also gets reflected from the surrounding snow, so I set it to a bright blue tone as you can see. I also painted some ambient lights on the right side ice wall. I also made the runestone glow. I just added a basic curves adjustment layer and tweaked the values for some bright white blue color and added a subtle glow by painting on the inverted layer mask with white. A windy snowy landscape is never complete with some falling snow. I dropped the snow texture, changed the blending mode to screen, warped it a bit to match the falling angle and also added a motion blur. If I wanted to remove fine particles, I just used curves to darken it up a bit and since it was on the screen blending mode, the finer dust particles were removed. 
I started working on the overall color grading. On a plan clear set to soft light blending mode, I painted with some dark blue color to define the shadows and painted with a medium toned peach color to make the highlights pop. I experimented with a bunch of color lookup tables and played with the several curves adjustment layers. I added some unnecessary layers so I will show what I felt was more relevant. The main objective was to boost the color saturation a bit and increase the overall contrast but not too much for the distant objects. As you know, I hardly use Camera Raw as I keep color grading as the composition progresses. Also after the final color grading, I keep fine tuning stuffs. So it is a bit of a hassle for me to reapply the Camera Raw every time even if I use it with a smart object. So I kinda stay away from it. I added some extra haze to intensify the atmospheric perspective and depth. I realized there was a problem with the direction of the falling snow. The strength of the wind at the distance gives a feeling that the particles should move more horizontally. But that would not be the case in the foreground, as there is a big wall on the right side. So I duplicated and scaled down the snow particles, made them more horizontal, masked them around the distant area. At the same time, the nearby particles in the foreground are kept more diagonal. I also added some loose snow sticking to our characters by sampling areas from this image. I used Blendif to remove the dark areas and keep the white snow. Finally, towards the end, I felt that the composition was not looking as expansive as I envisioned and it looked a bit closed up to me. So I warped the distant mountains to reveal parts of the bright warm sky and took away parts of the right wall to make more of the landscape visible. After making some necessary corrections, I decided to add some extra ribs and made it look faded out in the distance. If you go by the mythology, the Midgard serpent is extremely huge encircling entire worlds, so those extra ribs should help convey the feeling. And after every minute corrections, I took a snapshot of everything, went into free transform and used the perspective and warp options to stretch up the bottom area a bit. This might create an illusion that the camera is placed close to the ground and help make the scene look more expansive. So here is my final artwork inspired by God of War 2018. Do let me know in the comments if you get to see something new and find the video helpful. If so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, that would greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video and till then, enjoy creating.